Floss Tube. It's Jenny McStitcher. Today is Friday, May 17th. It's, uh, it's day 17 of Stitch Mania. It's day one of Victoria Day weekend. Oh my goodness, I love Victoria Day weekend. So it's a Monday holiday. It's, um, it's, uh, I took a half day today. So it's a three and a half day weekend, I guess you could call it. Um, when I finished work today, I ran home, grabbed my Stitch Mania stuff, grabbed some cider for the fridge here, grabbed my old dog, not my young energetic dog, I grabbed the old lazy dog. She needed, I'm gonna, I'm going with this. She needed a break from the young energetic dog. She needed the break, not me, she did. So I brought her up to the trailer. This is where we're at right now, we're at our trailer. Uh, it's just me, the old dog, the Stitch Mania stuff, the cider, a little bit of food, three pairs of pajamas. So that's the kind of weekend I'm going to have. I'm going to have a super relaxing, chill weekend. I hardly ever spend time just by myself with the dog. Um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm the mom. I don't get, I don't get a ton of time to myself, which is fine. I, I love being busy with my family, but every now and then when work starts to feel like this or life starts to feel like that, you just, you just want to get away. So that's what I'm doing this weekend. I've gotten myself away. And it's uh, it's not that far away. I'm only half an hour, 45 minutes away from my home. I can zip back as easy as anything. I can even live here and go to work. I can commute from here to work easily. Uh, but I usually I usually don't. I usually come up here on weekends and then for for my my vacation weeks when I get them. It's very nice to be here. The par the park is still wet. It's still a little bit unspring-like. The trees are still bare. Our springs are slow to develop and they've been slower in recent years. Where I live in um, Southern Ontario, Canada. Uh, but we're getting there. There's some tulips up and there's some, it's been a slow sp spring, but it is developing. It's, we're, we're almost there. If the rain would just stop and the sun would shine for a few days, I think we'd be, we'd be all right. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty exciting weekend for me. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. So I mentioned work. I, I don't think I mentioned it in previous videos, but I just wanted to mention my work quickly. I work, I work for the public library. I, I have worked for libraries for about, we're going on 30 years. So, uh, it's all I've really done. I did waitress for a couple of years before, before that, but libraries are, are really, I don't know what, I, what else I would have done if it hadn't been that. So I love, I love my work and I love, I love Stitch Mania. So Stitch Mania is, I stayed up late quite a few nights stitching. I've gotten up quite early to stitch on a few, a few occasions so far this month. And so I guess Stitch Mania is getting in my brain and making me mushy because this week at work, you'll like this. So people call in sometimes and ask reference questions and I won't tell a ton of like, you know, work stories because professional distance and privacy and all that stuff. But it will tell you this because it's kind of funny and it's connected to stitching. So somebody called up the other day and said, hey, do you have any books on the eyelet stitch? And I was kind of shocked. No one's ever asked that. It's not every day you get a question you've never had before. So I said, oh, like embroidery, like a book on embroidery stitches? Or like, do you just need to learn that one stitch? <clears throat> Pardon me. She said, what are you talking about? I said, the eyelet stitch. What are you talking about? And she said, the IELTS quiz. So the IELTS quiz has nothing to do with stitching. I don't even know what it is. I think I'm starting to forget things. International, English, language, standard, test something like that, IELTS. So she was looking for quiz, for practice quizzes, and I tried to give her an embroidery stitch book. Anyway, work's been, work's been, work's been full on lately. I've, I do programs at the library and I've had lots of programs and I've also done a little bit of work out in the community, uh, in addition to, to the, to the library work. So it's been, it's been a busy, busy couple of weeks. Speaking of the last couple of weeks, since I made floss tube, uh, number two, we had mother's day. Mother's day was amazing. Both of my kids were home. Uh, my daughter still lives at home, but my son lives in Montreal. So he made the trip home. 
uh, which was a great a great surprise. He didn't think he was going to be able to. He brought his girlfriend, who I had never met before, and it was a pleasure to meet her. They are very very cute together, very good friends, and really a nice a nice start there with their relationship. It was wonderful to meet her. She is a stitcher. Uh, I didn't get to see her stitching. She didn't um, she didn't share it. I think it's subversive. So I guess she doesn't realize that I'm cool. I'm cool with subversive. I'm cool with any any kind of stitching. There's really nothing... There's no stitching that would offend me, I don't think. I don't think so. I mean, feel free to take that as a challenge. I don't think I'm easily offended. I don't mind... I don't mind colorful language. Sometimes I use it. Uh, I don't mind... I don't mind graphic stuff. I don't mind... I don't mind those, like, home sweet effing home kind of... Nothing, nothing, nothing bothers me, but it must have been enough that she didn't really want to share it. So I am curious, I'll be honest. So maybe she'll see this video. Maybe she'll comment below and tell me what she's stitching. I hope so. Anyway, it was lovely to, it was lovely to have my family around me on Mother's Day. We spent some time with my mom. We spent some time with our new, with our new baby great niece. Um, and both my kids were home. So I couldn't have been, couldn't have been happier for Mother's Day this year. Also since the last video that I made, I had a beautiful stitch in day with the Hamilton Stitchers. Uh, Crafty Kim organized an absolutely wonderful event for I think maybe 20, 25 people. And we spent the day in a brightly lit, gorgeous recreation center room with so many different projects, so much inspiration, and so many nice new friends I met. Crafty Kim for the first time. She was absolutely charming. I met Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts, which it was really neat to see her Cafe au lait piece in real life. And it was really nice to hear her laughter because she laughs so much on her floss tube channel. But so it was it was a funny experience hearing such a familiar laugh from someone I'd never met before. It was pretty neat. And I also met Allison and Jennifer from Stitching Social, and they are absolutely delightful. Um, I spoke to Jen quite a bit compared to Allison, but I think Allison was just busy socializing. Maybe that's the Stitching Social part. Uh, and, and Jennifer and I were sitting closer to each other so we could more easily chat. It was a great day. I didn't want to leave at the end of the day, and I'm hoping that there will be more events like that because I would be I would be first in line. So those are two uh, the two main things I wanted to mention as far as updates go, uh, Mother's Day and the Stitch In. And then I wanted to talk to you about Stitch Mania. So I have continued the Stitch Mania plan, which was 31 new starts for May. And I've been enjoying it. The only thing is it's possible that next year, uh, I'm already thinking ahead to Stitch Mania 2020. Next year, I might plan for a new start, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then from those five starts, I might choose one to revisit through the weekend. I'm sure other people do something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just cooked some uh, peppers and onions and there's a little bit of it lingering in the air. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, because because the only issue, and it's not even an issue, I sometimes don't want to put these pieces down once I get started. So I showed you the first three. I showed you May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I thought, in all honesty, I sort of thought, I thought it was possible that I maybe would scrapbook the process of Stitch Mania. I thought that maybe I would even snip little pieces of the floss that I used and tape them to a scrapbook, including the original chart in a pocket. I even imagined making a library style pocket and tucking the charts in. Anyway, I, I thought maybe I would take a picture of the progress from day one and tape it or glue it to the scrapbook. I don't even know what day I did what. I don't even know what order I did these things in. I basically grabbed, stitched, tossed. That was how, that's how Stitch Mania is playing out for me. So, I'm not a scrapbooker. I'm a stitcher. 
Anyway, so I did want to show you my, my stars. I'm going to sort of do the kind of boring stuff first, I think. Since I don't know what chronological order they came in anyway, I might as well just uh, show you the boring stuff. So, Misty Purcell mentioned in one of her recent videos that Margaret Sherry had passed away, which I was very sad to hear. But I had also, um, I had a, a Margaret Sherry chart in my, she, okay, so Misty said she was going to start, I don't know if she has, I, I haven't caught her latest video, but, um, but she said she was going to start a, Ma a Margaret Sherry chart because of, of her recent passing. So I realized I had one in my stash too that I could start and here it is. I added this to my Stitch Mania plan sort of after the fact. So this is Perfect Harmony by the Margaret Sherry Collection. It's pretty cute. But I really like little tiny animals. Like I like, okay, I like the miniature. So I decided I wanted to stitch these 25 count over one without really looking at the chart and realizing that was going to be very challenging because the chart is full of blended threads, which you can do, right? You can do, I found this out um, through the ladies at my LNS. You can do one leg, one of the colors in the blend and the other leg, the other color. But that seems like a lot to do. Also, there's fractional stitches and also there's staggered stitches. So I've never seen a staggered stitch before. So when a stitch, like there's one stitch and rather than the next stitch st starting right beside it, it's kind of up one square. So it needs to be over two so that you can do that. Or I guess you'd have to pierce the, the threads of the fabric. And I've been trying to pierce the threads of the fabric, but it doesn't look very neat. It might not matter. I might persevere with it. It is tiny and it doesn't really look like a cat yet but it was only one day of stitching. So I will show it to you. Perfect Harmony by Margaret Sherry. And here, this little tiny kitty is. Oh, I can't even. Okay, doesn't look like a cat. Maybe you can very, very slightly tell that's a cat. That's an ear. And I, I think that that's a bit of a, a tail socket. Let's call that a tail socket. I don't think sockets. I don't think tails have sockets. Anyway. So can I get that close enough to see how tiny those little stitches are? No, not really. This little yellow stripe is this flute. So I think I'm around, I think I'm around there. It's gonna take me a million years with stitches that tiny. I might abandon it, I'll be honest with you, because it's so tiny. I might pick up a 40 count white linen and so it'll be, it'll be a little bigger than this, but it'll be over two and then I'll have an easier time with those fractional stitches. And then I'll use this beautiful um, silvery moon Lugana for something else, 25 count, something else. Okay, so that's, that's, that was one of, my, one of my mania starts. And here is another. Please forgive me, I did come up to my trailer without all of the charts, I realized. I just grabbed it all and ran up. I didn't have every single, every single piece, it turns out. But this is one of the pieces I, I don't have the, I don't have the chart at all for this. But I'm going to show you anyway. This is, this is silk weaver fabric and oh, I don't remember the color, the color, but it's can you feel that? It feels really good. Anyway, this is Primitive Hair Yule Queen. So this is a deer. And these are her arms. And she's in a fancy dress. And the pattern that you see there is going to be repeated all throughout her skirt. And this is her bodice. And this is her ear. And this is her, this will be her eye. And this gets filled in with white and black and this gets filled in with I don't even know so that's Yule Queen I really like primitive hair I felt pretty good about that um, that amount of stitching for one day this amount of stitching for one day isn't as embarrassing as some of my other amounts of stitching for one day like the cat doesn't look like much but let me tell you you couldn't really see it but on that cat her face is all stitched white or his so those are two, and here's three. Here's the third. 
I love this one. I did not want to put this away. And if suddenly somebody told me Stitch Mania was canceled worldwide, I would happily grab this piece and stitch it until it's done. This is Froth and Bubble. Here we go. Long Dog Sampler Froth and Bubble. And it goes like this. Life is mostly froth and bubble. Two things stand like stone. Kindness in another's trouble. Courage in your own. I like the sentiment. I love froth and bubble. I had no idea what that was. I still don't really know. But a couple people agree it's something to do with beer. I'm using picture this plus Sprite. I don't know how well this color will show up. It's kind of a light purple color. And no, it doesn't really show up at all. It's a very light sort of almost neutral purple. Holding that closer is not helping. But here's my start. So this flower will get pinked up in the middle. And then I love this twisted vine. And I don't know why I went over. I think I started this in just the right spot. I guess I could have ironed it, but I made a trailer. Uh, and so, yeah, I really love this. So the picture again, just so you can see what little tiny bit I've done. I've done that, but not the inside pink stuff. So there we go. I've done the motif above the word life. And this is the project bag I'm using for that one. And there's my little flosses. I, I still, I'm mostly a floss bobbining, bobbinating type of person. I have used other methods, but I think I still prefer the floss bobbin. I don't know if you can tell what a nice rich blue that is there. It's quite nice. Just DMC, but sometimes, you know, well charted patterns with DMC can be just as, just as beautiful as any of the variegated or even the silk floss. They can, it can be quite beautiful. Okay, so that's three starts. And then this one in my fox project bag is my primitive hair fox. Obviously I love primitive hair. Okay, this piece is, um, is, is this chart is the one I bought to go on the um, printed linen, that Anne Boleyn, I think it's called, linen. I wanted something large and um, simple. Yeah, because the, because the fabric itself is busy. And so here's my start. My super unthrilling start. I don't even know which way's up. Oh, I can tell by the words on this one. This way's up. So there's my creasy fabric and there's my small, small start. That's DMC, I think. I think that that is 301, DMC 301, and that's the only color I've put in there yet so far. So that might be the most boring thing I've ever shared on the internet, because really it's just a little, a little block of one color. But it took hours, right? You know how it goes. It took hours and hours, maybe three or four hours to do that much. So that's one, two, three, four starts. And... Here is fifth. Okay, so this one, quite a few people commented on this on this project. This is my um, this is my Mary Queen of Scots inherited low production, sort of like hand drawn um, chart from Sally Scott Aiton. E A I T O N. Sally Scott Aiton. If I if I could find her and see if she had designed anything else I'd be curious so this piece is missing this piece is missing this piece is right here um it looks like this it's very small it's smaller than it's not this is probably not too much smaller than it'll look in real life so there it is now this emblem um the emblem I made the mistake of Googling the real Mary Queen of Scots emblem and finding out that it doesn't look like this. It looks similar, but the colors are all different. So then I was faced with 
do I stitch it this way and not have any idea why it's stitched like that, why it's designed like this, or do I stitch, do I change the colors and stitch it the way it appears throughout history? Um, and I decided to change the colors. And I've already mentioned probably in other videos, I don't, I don't love changing colors because I'm not, a, I'm not really color coordinated at all. So, um, so I probably won't like this, but I do like it so far. And let me know what you think, because I think it's, I think it's okay. I don't know how well it's going to show up in this light, at this trailer, in the fa in the fading daylight, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So, it's in autumn blush fabric, and there it is. So, this is the piece that I worked on during the stitch-in day with Crafty Kim and Jen and Allison and Caroline. I really love the way this fabric feels. I, I'm enjoying the the floss that I'm using. It's um, it's uh, it's fancy fancy floss. It is called where is it? It's this um, embroidery cotton. Valda I'm using Valdani, Valdani threads. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I hope I don't come down with something on Victoria Day weekend because that would be that would be a travesty. Anyway, so I'll show you this again. This is how it looks in real life, uh, except it's upside down. It has blue, yeah, that's right side up. It has blue, it has a blue M, A, and then a, what color is that? Sort of a black S. And then these flowers are red, they have a yellow center, I believe, and these are thistles. And in the original picture, I didn't realize those were thistles, because they didn't really, really look like thistles to me. So I've just changed it up a little bit. I think I'll, I'll leave most of the rest of it fairly exactly the way it looks. I just, I just had to change up the emblem. If I'm going to do an emblem, I want it to be the right colors. So yeah, that's one, two, three, four, five starts. Plus the three I already showed you, so that's eight. So that's, um, so this is 17, so now nine more, right? Um, and the nine more actually comes all in one piece. The nine more is the Tiny Modernist Year of Animal Fun and Frolics. And here is October's, oh, I think that's a badger. We'll say that's a badger. April bunny, kitty, I mean, wearing a bunny, bunny ears. I like this one November that's my daughter's birthday month cute little bunny in a scarf hey and I'm wearing a scarf let's see this is my very very favorite August little deer little beaver little marshmallow there's even a sweet little marshmallow I love that one September I don't even know what that animal, I'm thinking porcupine. Mm. Hedgehog, mushroom, cute. February, these are not in order. You probably noticed, giraffe. Apparently there's no S on giraffes. It's giraffe, plural. I don't, who knew? June. Another fox and a squirrel having a picnic. January, badger, snowman, cardinal, cute. December, penguin, seal, somebody got a present. March, this is the only one that I got started really properly on with the lamb. The other ones I mostly did borders didn't touch this one july bear bees honey may so that probably is all 12 unless i've lost one and here's my start on nine or ten of those 
This is also not thrilling. But these borders are a lot more stitching than I originally had thought that they were. So, I mean, that's not bad, right? That's not bad. So each border is a different color and they all have this sort of like bow on them. Yeah, we'll call that a bow. Or a crown. We'll call it a bow. Yeah, so that's about how big that's going to be. Also, I didn't center it very well. But maybe I'll be able to use the extra fabric on the one side because I didn't center it right. That's all for Stitch Mania. Not bad. Not bad. It's been fun. I have some very exciting starts to come. And I have some haul to show you. And we're at 25 minutes. So I'm going to try to do this haul stuff in maybe like five minutes. Right? Okay. So my haul is all charts. No speed previews. All charts, all charts that I ordered at my local needlework store um, over the last couple of months and some of them came in, well, they all came in pretty much at the same time. I bought most of these based on Nashville needlework uh, videos that people posted, the things that they liked. So I was influenced by all of your favorites and, and now your favorites are my favorites. So I bought a bunch because I'm basically a me too kind of person. I bought three pieces, three charts from the blue flower and they're all squirrels, seasonal squirrels. I'm missing, I guess, I'm missing summer. Yes, I have. Spring squirrel, cute. So acorns in a tree. I have winter squirrel, seriously sweet, not well focused. Winter squirrel, blue flower. And I have autumn squirrel, acorns on a tiered plate tray thing. So the lady at the shop where I bought this, she said that squirrel looks skinny, but if you look close, it's just, he has a big white belly. You just can't see it as well on this fabric as maybe on a darker fabric. But yeah, you can see it there. You can see his belly. He's not skinny. So when I stitch this, I might, I might choose a darker background fabric just, just to avoid people thinking he's scrawny. Oh, I think he's adorable either way. You know, scrawny squirrels are fine too, you know, right? Oh, I just bent over and squished one of my new patterns and it's, um, it's now creased. So, oh well. I picked up Cottage Garden Peace on Earth. I thought this one was part of the Cottage, mm, cottage Garden Samplings mm, Songbird series, which I've been working on. Not part of it. Different, different stitch count and everything, but very sweet. I think this originally appeared in a magazine. And then it got re-released as its own little leaflet. I picked up a mother's heart because it's true. It's so true. My kids are amazing and they do, they, they just, they make me proud every day and they're not bad kids and they never really were bad kids. But still, sometimes it feels like motherhood is a heartbreak. I don't know why. Even with very, very good kids. I think it has to do with them growing up. I think that's all it is. They don't stay small forever. So I thought that was appropriate for this time in life when the kids are growing up. I picked up Simplicity. This is number nine in the Cottage Garden Songbird series. I might start that this weekend. And I picked up this super adorable Let My Examples Shine by Tessie and me. It also on the back has the inside. It's a needle, I forget what that's called, needle keep. Um, I'm not sure if the, if the picture was glued down and came loose or if 
I shook it loose or what, but it's floating in there. But that's okay. It's safe. Isn't that sweet? I love that little house. And the and the bee house. The bee The bee house? The bee house. I love the bee house. And Kathy Barrick. Needlework. I've never stitched a Kathy Barrick design. Never stitched Blue Flower. Never stitched Chessie and Me. Until this mania business, I'd never stitched Chinese Modernist. Uh, I've been exposed to all kinds of new things through Floss Tube and through all of you and your sharing. So th that's my haul. And I also picked up some, some fabric. I showed you the Sprite by Pitch This Plus and something else. Silvery Moon. And I also picked up a whole bunch of needles and a bunch of, let's see, a bunch of Weeks Dye Works floss for, look at that, look at all, look at that mess. Look at how I keep my floss. Oh, it's, it's outrageous. So this is to start me on on these because these are the yet yet to start ones so I have to decide which one to start you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to help me decide which one to start next uh, would should would you help me decide between simplicity have faith merry and bright Blue Bird of Happiness. Don't pick that one. I, I don't want to do that one. Forever and ever. Have courage. If you could, if you could comment and let me know which one you think I should start next, I will save these ones and start whichever one you say to start next. So I have all this, um, I have all this random weeks stuff I have to sort and I hope that I don't have to buy a ton more but I'm pretty sure I will uh, and so but I have enough I have plenty to start any one of those right because they they do use the same colors I was also thinking oh I have one more I have also in that series I have this one I think I have this one kitted up and ready winter wisdom I think I'm gonna do that one with DMC the reason I thought I would do that with DMC is because, see how the motifs are on the small side? I thought maybe the variegation wouldn't really matter as much, but we'll see. I do have it kitted up and ready to go, so you could pick that one for me. Anyway, I think that's just about it for my stitching. And I also wanted to mention to you that your comments and your likes and all of your encouragement has really meant a lot to me. I might have said that already at the beginning of this video. I, if I didn't say it, I thought it. It has meant a lot to me. I also wanted to mention, because a few people mentioned in the comments, that your, uh, your, your questions about my surgery, like your, not questions so much, nobody said, hey, what's your surgery? But your comments about my surgery really made me feel good and this floss tube in general has been doing the trick and distracting me from the weight but the weight continues i have called and harassed the poor medical receptionist many many times since my first floss tube video and before and I'll, i'm sure i'll continue doing it when's my surgery when's my surgery and it's unscheduled as of as of right now but I didn't tell you what my surgery was because, you know, I didn't know you very well. But I'm going to tell you now. My surgery is the thyroid surgery. It's a, it's a thyroidectomy. That's what I'm getting. And that is also why I'm wearing a scarf. Like the squirrel was wearing a scarf. I'm going to wear a scarf until I get my surgery. Because my, my thyroid is enlarged. It's quite enlarged. And so I wear a scarf 24 seven. I sleep in, I don't quite sleep in a scarf, but I practically do. Like I wear, I wear a scarf all the time. So I'm getting that done. I sort of disrespected the Canadian healthcare system a little bit and felt a little feeling, a little twinge of guilt about that. 
I, I have nothing against. Honestly, I'm very fortunate. But it's not an emergency situation. It's not. I'm not even sick. So I'm not a priority. And I understand that. Everybody feels like they're their thing is a priority and I feel like it too I feel like I should go to the ER some days but it doesn't really bother me that much and I'm not sick and it's not a big whoop really if I'm being honest it's not a big whoop so thank you for your thank you for your thoughts and your your support um and and for you know the questions just hey like have you heard or stuff like that it's been really nice um I'm hoping I hear soon. I will share that with you. I will continue hiding my neck. But when I have my scar, I won't hide that. I will be proud of that. And um, and this has been a really good distraction from that. I'm not freaking out as much as I was. I'm not thinking about it as much. But I am still phoning that medical receptionist. Because I do want a date. I don't even care so much if the date isn't till October. I just want the date. I'm sure you understand. So that's what's going on. Big, huge, big up, massive, big thyroid. That's all. No big whoop. My grandma had it. I made fun of her. That was not a good thing to do because now it's like, it's like karma thyroid is what I have. I have a karma thyroid. Anyway, on that note, I just wanted to say I hope you're having a great Stitch Mania, a great Victoria Day weekend or whatever your comparable weekend is. Uh, I think it's a holiday in other places too. If not Victoria Day, maybe like a Memorial Day or something like that. So I hope you're having a great time. I hope you get lots of stitching in, lots of time with your loved ones. And I hope to see you in two more weeks when Stitch Mania is over. And then I can start focusing on finishing. Right? We can all start focusing on finishing. Because starting is fun. But finishing is fun too. So thank you so much for watching this video. It did go a little longer than I thought. But at least it's not 50 minutes. Uh, like my first one was. So... Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for visiting. Bye.